Alrighty then, welcome back, folks. Uh, yep, it's a uh, Woman Wednesday, and uh, on Woman Wednesday, we try to bring on the best guests that you want. And uh, the women's perspective is uh, quite often a lot better than the most of the men we have on the show. Um, we like to bring you women in business, women in philanthropy, women in the arts, and uh, of course, women in politics are right on the top. And when you want to talk about what's happening in politics, especially with our great president Donald Trump, who's better than Kelly? Riddle Sadler joins us today. She was the uh, former special assistant to Donald Trump, communications director now at the uh, America First Action Super PAC. Yes, and your right. super PAC is the only official Trump super PAC. Exactly right. The only All one these other ones are pretenders. Yeah, yes, the only one sanctioned by the campaign and the White House and the president himself. So we've had uh, Kimberly Guilfoyle yes. on the show before. She's the chair of the Victory yes. uh, Campaign Fund. That's the actual Campaign. Raising money, yeah. And they're yeah. out there raising money a few weeks ago. I know they had all kinds of people, guests of our show and others down at Mar-a-Lago. Mm -hmm. They raised like 25 mil Yeah, yeah they day. exceeded expectations dramatically. And then um, you guys are out there using all methods available these yes. days. Social media, ads, this, that, yes. television and stuff um, to try to bring in independent money. Yes, uh, big dollar donations since we're we're a pack, so you know million dollar contributions plus uh, with big dollar donors. We are really looking at targeting six states: Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Michigan, which are the you know battleground states that are going to win this president the election. Every dollar that's donated gets put into the campaign in those states on the ground to turn out the vote and get people excited for 2020. So just you know, there's a lot of talk about citizens' union and PACs, and they yeah. got to get big money. Money out. Just about every presidential candidate, even all the ones on the left, yeah. um, have some kind of operation running with a PAC. All of them. Okay? And if you follow the money on Bernie Sanders, all of his different little shields that he has there, um, that all runs back to George Soros somewhere in the universe. So let's not forget about yeah. that. So one of the things when you're out there talking about people on why they need to invest more money into, mm -hmm. into making sure Donald Trump mm -hmm. is our president again, I'm sure one of the main points for you is this amazing economy we're in the middle of. Oh, absolutely. It's the number one reason that people are excited about this president, especially independents. I mean, 63 percent of all Americans approve of what this president is doing um, for the economy. They feel it in their pocketbooks. They feel it with the rising wages. They feel it um, in the stock market if they've got a 401k. Uh, we have net, we've passed two major trade deals, um, so we're going to be reaping the benefits of those shortly. And this is one of the major selling points of this presidency and the reason why people turn out to vote. So um, this is really a thorn in the side for the left because <laughs> yeah, they can't, no they can't avoid it, right? Yeah, um, they're trying to, though. And I like to try to, in the morning, I get my juices flowing. Mm -hmm. I watch, like, Morning Joe okay, to, good. to get, get, get like, aggravated, <laughs> to pump myself up. And what they're doing now is they're taking to lying and manipulating yeah. statistics. I want you to take a look at this. This is what they were showing this guy, Steve Ratner. What a perfect oh, yeah. name, okay? Um, he's talking about how Obama had much greater job growth than Donald Trump. Do we have that full screen? Okay, so this is what they show you, right? Now, you're quite intelligent woman, I know that. Um, it looks like they're saying there that, except for that one big red line, uh, Obama was doing way better. Yeah. Okay, now what you can come back to us. Now what tricks your eye there is they only did that chart from uh, from 2010. Mm -hmm. So they're yeah. telling people, so look, what about 2008, 2009. Yeah. So now when you when you take into account 2008 till 2010, mm -hmm. which was the first two years, which count. Yeah. <laughs> now take a look at the chart. Okay, what they left out was not the other the other one. Um, what they left out was, in his first two years, he lost so many millions of jobs yeah. that this, this illustration they've given us, they said, well, Obama wound up creating 201,000 jobs, and uh, averaging 201, mm -hmm. and Trump averages 182. But when you do the chart the right way yeah. from the beginning, He's averaging 109,000, so Trump is lapping them by like 80%. They're lying now yeah. because they can't escape the stats. No, and especially stats um, in the manufacturing sector, which was crushed, killed under Obama. Basically, him saying you didn't build that or these jobs are not coming back or, you know, I can't wave a magic wand. The president has brought back manufacturing jobs, over a half million of them, um, in sectors that impact blue-collar workers. Um, just what he campaigned on and what he promised to do. So, um... 
I'm sure you know Peter Navarro. He's one of the yeah. chief economic advisors to, to the president. And uh, Peter Navarro uh, was out there on the stump disclaim, disputing this mm -hmm. Obama economy stuff. I want you to take a look with what uh, Peter Navarro had. He's part of Trump's trade team also, yeah. so he's yeah. been doing some great work. Also did was swell the balance sheet of the Fed, trying to use Keynesian tools to pump up an economy uh, which basically was suffering. What President Trump realized is that we had a structural problem, primarily with offshoring our jobs and overregulation and high taxes relative to around the world. He fixed those structural problems. That set up the economic boom that we're having right now. And back in the Obama-Biden years, um, it was it was horrible. We we had this new normal of a growth under two percent. <laughs> yeah. He said it best. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and deregulation, tax cuts, um, all of this has helped, you know, energy independence, the fracking that's going on in Pennsylvania, this is all stimulated, helped stimulate the economy. Um, we're not looking at a top-down, you know, Obama stimulus. That never really happened. It was fake. Yeah, and also when they're showing this job growth under Obama, um, he had 0% interest rates. Yeah. So um, the government was basically lending money to banks to lend out to businesses at zero. Yeah. So that stimulates growth. And, yeah. you know, Trump came into office with a rate over 2%. Mm -hmm. So now the rate's down a little bit. But I'm saying, in spite of a higher yeah. interest rate and not having money to give away, yeah. we're creating almost double the amount of yeah. jobs. This has got to help in the heartland. Well, I mean, it definitely does. I mean, and it also helps with, you know, the African-American community that sees their lowest unemployment rates, the Hispanic community that sees their lowest unemployment weight rates. Women have uh, contributed more than half of these jobs created have been going to women. So women have also been being pulled out of poverty. So this is, this is all good news, and it's numbers that people feel. Leading um, some of the best uh, numbers on uh, Minority new housing numbers, yes, uh, more minorities are purchasing homes. Um, most new businesses started in the uh, African-American community. Yeah. Most new business started in the Latino community. Most new business started in the Asian community yeah. um, under Donald Trump. And that's also lower taxes, less regulation, yes. getting people into yes. business. Yes, yes. Small business owners have never felt more optimistic than they do right now. Um, and this is because of deregulation. Obamacare put on a bunch of regulations that put a lot of small businesses out of work. Yep. They had to shut their doors. By de deregulation is really one of these unsung heroes that people don't talk about, yep. but really do impact small business owners, Main Street, not Wall Street. Well, um, you heard it right here from the boss herself. You got to check out the uh, America First Action, the only uh, sanctioned super PAC. And uh, Kelly Riddle Sadler will uh, hopefully we'll have you back again yeah, uh, love any, to. Any, anytime. And uh, this is what you get on <laughs> Women Wednesday. You get the best of the best. And uh, coming up next is another one of the best investigative reporter, journalist, and editor, founder of the uh, Uncovered DC. Tracy Baines was with us yesterday, and she's back again to light it up some more. You're watching Liquid Lunch, back with Tracy Beans right after this.